All right, in this video, we are going to look at active high and low pass filters. We're gonna do the low pass filter first. And if you haven't already, for this to make sense, you're probably gonna to need to go back and review the videos on impedance and passive high and low pass filters earlier in this playlist, where we just had resistors and capacitors and the output in those circuits could never exceed the input. So the greatest ratio, oops, of V out over V in, the magnitude you could get of that could be one, it could never exceed one. And what we'll see when we use op amps to make active high and low pass filters, then we get a gain factor so we can actually make the output bigger than the input. So we are going to have our op amp circuit as usual with our inverting and non-inverting inputs. The non-inverting input is going to be tied to ground. We are going to have a series resistor RS with the source. And then in addition to a feedback resistor RF, we are also going to have a feedback capacitor CF. So this is kind of a combination of what we've seen previously for both inverting and non-inverting amplifiers and integrators and differentiators where we had a capacitor in there. And specifically in this case, we are asking what happens when we drive this circuit with a sine wave VS, and that allows us to analyze the circuit using impedances as usual. I'm gonna draw my load resistor here, but that is just kind of to emphasize the point that the output of the op amp does not depend on the resistance of this load resistor, at least in the ideal case. And since I mentioned that we are driving this with a sine wave, we can analyze this circuit with impedances. And I am going to lump two different impedances here. I'm gonna have my input or source impedance, and then I'm gonna combine my two feedback impedances the capacitor and the resistor. So we'll call that our feedback impedance and we'll call this over here our source impedance. And if we do that and I redraw this circuit just using the impedances, where I have my non-inverting input tied to ground, I have my source impedance ZS and my feedback impedance ZF, then we notice that this circuit pretty much just looks like an inverting amplifier where I have V out instead of resistor values now, I have negative ZF over ZS times V in. Again, I can only make this assumption about using impedances when that input voltage VS or VN, I got lazy about my subscripts there, is a sine wave. So I know that my source resistance ZS is just equal to RS because the impedance of a resistor is just R. I also know that my feedback resistance, so again, you can, sorry, feedback impedance, again, you can go back and watch the video about impedances, but impedances add inversely in parallel. So one over my feedback resistance is equal to one over the impedance of the feedback resistor, which is just RF plus one over the impedance of the feedback capacitor, which if you remember the impedance of a capacitor ZC is one over J, C, omega. So it's not just equal to capacitance like the resistor. We have a frequency dependent equation here. So that's gonna be one over C, F, J, omega. So if we rearrange all of that to solve for Z, F, I'm not gonna write out all the algebra, but we get R, F over one plus J, omega, R, F, C, F. So now we have ZS, we have ZF, we can plug both of these into our equation for V out, and that is going to give us our final equation for the frequency response of an active low pass filter. V out equals negative RF over RS times one over one plus J omega RF CF times Vs. So this is the complex form. So I still have the J in there. As we saw back in the videos for the passive low pass filters, I can take the magnitude of this if I just want to get the amplitude of V out or divide both sides by Vs to get the ratio of V out to Vs or Vn. But for purposes of this video, since we covered that process in previous videos, we're gonna leave it in this form. Again, the point here being that for a passive low pass filter, we pretty much just had this term that should look kind of familiar, but now we have this gain term
out in front, where if we choose our feedback resistor to be greater than the source resistor, we can make the value of this fraction greater than one, therefore getting an output amplitude that is bigger than our input amplitude. Having an active low pass filter, again, if we were to look at, I'll do that in a different color. Oh geez, erase, frequency response. Where we have that ratio, the magnitude of V out over VN versus omega for the passive low pass filter that was never gonna be bigger than one, but depending on the value we select, or values we select for RF and RS, we can now get a gain of greater than one with the active low pass filter. For the active high pass filter, we are going to have a very similar setup. So active high pass filter. We're going to have our op amp with the non-inverting input tied to ground. We have just shuffled the resistors and capacitors around a bit. So now we have both a source resistor and a source capacitor, RS and CS in series with the source and a feedback resistor connected over to V out. So we have our feedback resistor RF. So if we lump those impedances, we're going to have a single source impedance ZS where one over ZS is gonna be equal to one over ZR S plus one over ZCS. And I should have written that out in white, but a wall and then eh, get my colors mixed up. We're gonna have our feedback impedance ZF, which is just going to be equal to RF. So I am not going to write out all of the algebra again, but just like we did in the previous slide for the active low pass filter, we can rearrange this to solve for ZS. We can say, okay, this basically just looks like an inverting amplifier and plug in our impedance values. And if you do that, you're going to get the equation V out equals negative J omega CS RF all over one plus J omega CS RS times VN. And in this case, if we take the limit as omega goes to zero, you see this is gonna be zero over one. So you still get that high pass filter behavior where you are killing off lower frequencies. But in the limit as omega goes to infinity, so this one becomes negligible and the J, Omega, and CS are all going to cancel, but the RF, RS factor isn't going to cancel. So just like we had for the active low pass filter, and there's a minus sign out front, but you can multiply or amplify the output by this gain that can be greater than one, depending on your selection of RF and RS. And again, if you look at a graph of the frequency response, where for a passive low pass filter, the ratio of output to input, the magnitude of that was never going to exceed one. For an active high pass filter, you can get a gain of greater than one by your choice of these resistor values. So that is finally it for op amp videos. In the next videos in this series, we are going to start talking about semiconductors. So we will start talking about diodes and transistors.